John Morley is a very methodical in his, his approach. He plays a, a more rigid game plan, which is based on ball control, strong defence, and uh, obtaining territorial position. And history suggests uh, that this is the most successful type of rugby. But at the moment, I, I've watched Wigan a couple of times this year, and I think I've got a feeling that the pendulum's just swinging away from them. In a word, who's going to win today, Wigan or Witness? Logic says Wigan, but I'm going for Witness. All right, thanks a lot, Phil. Uh, more from Phil later. Time now, though, to join match commentator Clive Tursley. Thank you, Robert. Rugby League Live has brought you four of these Witness Wigan showdowns in the last year or so. But it's a while since these two great sides have been so close to full strength. Jonathan Davis is the most notable absentee, but 20-year-old Stuart Spruce has the Witness number one jersey on merit. Andy Carrier is back to part Alan Tate in the centre. And if any of those forwards fancy a breather, Kurt Sorensen and fit again Imossi Coloto are waiting on the substitutes bench. They're both certain to figure. We'll be seeing the new Great Britain scrum half the day too. But will he be David Hume, the witness number seven? Or will it be Wigan Sean Edwards? Both set out the Ashes series. Both are desperate to revive their international careers in the wake of Andy Gregory's retirement from Test football. Gregory's one of 11 league internationals in that Wigan lineup, and remember Andy Goodway is still injured. Frano Botica and Martin Dermott were both past fit this morning. Botica will have the goal kicking responsibilities. All six of the back row forwards on view today are in the current Great Britain squad. Plenty then for Mal Reilly and Phil Lada to keep an eye on today, and no doubt plenty for referee Colin Morris too. It was his late and controversial penalty award that swung this fixture Wigan's way a year ago. Rugby league fans never forget. The conditions here at Witness are quite excellent. Last Sunday's match against Hull had to be postponed because the far side of the pitch, under the shadow of the stand that you can see, had not fully thawed out. And indeed it was quite firm when I arrived at Norton Park this morning. But the sun has got to it and the pitch just has a little bit of give in it. The morning wind has died down too. And it's difficult to imagine a better setting for a better championship fixture. Strictly speaking, Witness would have to win by 25 points to regain the first division leadership, which they've held briefly on a couple of occasions this season. You get long odds against that happening, much shorter odds against one of these two teams ending the season as champions again. Big crowd, a big occasion, and it will be Witness to start proceedings. Les Holiday is the man with the ball in his hands. And Les Holiday is the current favourite to be partnering Dennis Betts in the Great Britain second row in France. Strangely enough, his biggest rivals are his teammates today, Paul Hume and Richard Ayres. So many aspects to enjoy about this match. Joe Lydon fit again and on the Wigan wing. The leaders Hull have that tough nut, Bradford Northern to crack tomorrow. Witness start the weekend two points behind them but with a game in hand and Hull have still to visit both Central Park and Norton Park. Although strictly speaking, Hull were here last weekend. They couldn't play the match. Andy Platt plays in the second row for Wigan in the front row for Great Britain. Martin Dermott at acting halfback. Andy Gregory. Dean Bell. Taken a little high on the chest, says referee Colin Morris, by Tony Myler. Lydon with a downturn. Early test for young Stuart Spruce. He's looked so sound under the high ball. What a prospect this is. 20 years of age and growing up quickly. Paul Hume, Tony Myler. Looking to make some space for Andy Currier, who was wide of Devereaux then. The ball went forward out of Currier's hands, and the first scrum. Already it looks like, Clive, that both these teams are prepared to throw the ball around, and certainly with uh, Tony Myler in sparkling form, they really look like they opened up the Wigan defence there. Yes, I think Wigan will be looking for Sean Edwards to provide some swift ball for his centres today. I think John Money quite fancies the chances of Dean Bell and Kevin Ira running at Tate and Currier in the witness centres. Here's Steve Hampson running at Currier. Ellery Hanley. 
always makes two or three more yards than you've any right to expect from him. Ian Lucas. Gregory and Edwards combining. Bell. Iro. Frano Potica. Rippled away from McKenzie. Interesting to see that Botica is playing on the left wing in the number five shirt. We were led to believe that he would be opposing Martin Afire today, but it's Joe Lydon who's on the wing and right wing against Afire. ball on there when he gathered it from the base of the scrum and that could be a costly error it's now Wiggins head and ball always a bad mistake when the halfback knocks on from the scrum on six tackles they had in their own 25 now the pressure is going to be right back on them Edwards Bell fake the run around good tackle by Stuart Spruce never took his eye off the pivot man Bell here's Hanley Three, just about enough to bring him down. Good position for Wigan. Andy Gregory. And again. So brave to stand up there and look to offload the ball with the tackles flying in. Hanley. What will he do? He's got it out to Kevin Aro. Ian Lucas. Gregory again. Already a central figure. The ball seems to be magnetically drawn to him. Dean Bell. Great break. Good tackle again by Young Spruce. have a chance to relieve their lines that's quite a talking isn't it Andy Gregory's got the message we've seen some great attack and defense from this new number one Stuart Spruce in the first five minutes Clive obviously a very good talented player That's what Andy Gregory was penalised for. A little nod of the head. Here's a senior Fimalo. Joe Grimmer. Richard Ayres. Be holiday to kick. Charged down though by Andy Platt and that could fall nicely for Ian Lucas. If only he could have gathered it. They were quickly up on holiday then. Certainly would have been big trouble if uh, Big Ian Lucas could have held onto that kick because he had someone unmarked on his left flank and there was only one witness defender left. Big Ian Lucas is a bit of an understatement. He's over 17 stone at the moment. John Modi was saying to me that his big front row players need regular football and the recent postponements deny them that. Nice hands from Grimmer and from Hume. Alan Tate, first we've seen of Martin O'Fire. Iroh just caught him, unloaded to Tate, and the ball was already in touch. Play's been brought back. Borderline decision for the touch judge Jackie Beach to make. Doug Lawton had a very good view of it too. It's right under his nose. We just felt that O'Fire had got it away.
Colin Morris insistent that the ball must go in between the two number eights and strike the hooker's feet. Of all the scrum directives that are flying around at the moment, that seems to be the most important one. Edwards. He's lost it. And Mackenzie's recovered it. And here's David Hume. Alan Tate. By Marlow. Real buzz of expectancy around Norton Park every time this New Zealand prop rope forward gets the ball. And this one too, Joe Grimmer. They're both playing really well at the moment. If you need evidence, the very presence of Kurt Sorensen on the bench tells you that. Richard Ayres. Eight minutes gone, no score. Witness in the white shirts on the attack. Trying to bring something from Les Hordy's kick, but Steve Hansen watched it very carefully. Pinned down by Devereaux, and then by Hume. Bell trying to run it out, taking some of the workload off his forwards. Edwards too. Andy Platt. Nice little dummy by Dermot. He's got Skerritt at his shoulder. Wider here is Iro. De Dermot keeping it alive for Botica. It's almost witness type play from Wigan. And it's a useful kick which Botica will chase. If he's got a decent bounce there, and it might fall for Hanley. But John Devereaux is back there covering. Good defensive play by Devereaux. Came across from his wing to cover the danger. But Wigan then in open play off the cuff and here they've got something. Line's been penalised. It's always a mute point. The uh, play the ball is a contest. The ball can be kicked or healed by the marker providing it's not dangerous or before the ball's actually been released. Cody Morris was not satisfied that one or both of those provisos had been satisfied and indeed he's now penalised Wigan for offside and witness in a much better position. Great break there by Martin Dermott, the Wigan hooker. He's obviously very, very keen to impress against Phil McKenzie today. Yes, the Great Britain number nine jersey seems to be stuck to the back of Lee Jackson of Hull at the moment but if there are two contenders for his place then certainly Mackenzie and Dermot the opposing hookers today would be top of the list Mackenzie here at acting halfback Australian born but now Great Britain qualified ball out of Grimmer's hands offside witness Paul Hume and Asini Farmalo Ellery Hanley just asking Frano Botica whether he fancies a potted girl, and I fancy he will. Botica, who was something of a doubt for this match, he had badly bruised ribs from that game at Sheffield. But in what's been a difficult baptism to the professional code for this former All Black, his goal kicking potential has been a real bonus for Wigan. It's a while since they've had a really dependable specialist goal kicker. Eleven minutes gone, and the first scoring opportunity falls to Wigan's Frano Botica. It's about 12 yards inside the witness half of the field. Beauty. First blood to Wigan. Frano Bodiger's penalty gives them a two-point lead with 12 minutes gone.
what's been an inevitably competitive start strewn with one or two more errors than we might have expected and now the deadlock has been broken Dennis Betts, we haven't seen too much of him so far Witness tackle is penalised Obviously the forwards still trying to sort each other out in there There's probably the four of the best props in the first division on show here today With the two Kiwis for Witness and the two young Englishmen for Wigan As a prop forward of some repute yourself Are there personal battles to be sorted out before we can get on with the team contest? Well obviously, you've obviously got Kelvin Skerritt out there And Ian Lucas who are very, very young and dynamic props And they're trying to assert themselves over the, the very much in form Famalo and Grimmer from Witness Boys will be boys here comes a very big boy, Ian Lucas. Gregory. Andy Platt, beautifully taken on the burst. Hanley at his shoulder, ran past Devereaux as if he wasn't there. Great play by Hanley, great try. Unstoppable. Larry Hanley sets about another century. 300 up at Sheffield in his last game. And plenty more to come from Ellery Cuthwin Hanley. Well, Andy Gregory, there he was again at his very, very best. Running across the line, dumbing inside and outside, and finally picking up Andy Platt. He picked up Hanley, and Hanley step away from the young fullback Stuart Spruce. There's nothing he could do, and a four-pointer to Ellery Hanley. What's the problem trying to tackle Hanley here? I mean, it's obviously difficult, but what is the specific problem of trying to nail him? Well, the problem, the initial problem is that Andy Gregory goes across the defensive line. Now, if everybody doesn't come up and move in on their man, obviously there's going to be a hole somewhere. Uh, Andy played, obviously did well, ran into the gap, picked up Hanley, and he did the rest. He's got great sideways movement, hasn't he? He steps off either foot. Well, he, he, they've been struggling a bit this year, Wigan, and obviously they've had their injury problems, and I think that number seven, he's been the most important man missing, and now he's back and back to his best form. They're very, very ominous signs. Botica then with a chance to improve. Just pulled it. But we're going to have an early six-point lead. Ellery Hanley's 12th try of the season. Here you see the power of the man and the mobility. That's John Devereaux that he just shook off there and young Stuart Spruce that he ran round. Two very strong and pacey backs. And Hanley, a forward by name, has got the running power of any back. Six points to nil, then Wigan lead. Morris felt that the markers weren't properly aligned then, that's what witness have been penalised for. Collected by a fire. Wigan failing to reach touch. Les Holiday. Nice step. Good support. Tony Myler. Little bonus that for witness. Paul Hume. Thought about trying to slip airs through the gap, but he just got a little bit ahead of him. Six more though. Mackenzie. Holiday again. David Hume. Paul Hume. David Hume and Sean Edwards in direct confrontation there. Joe Grimmer. Come on there, come on. Witness have been asking Grimmer to really go for it in the first half of games in recent weeks and have often substituted him into the second period. 
Here's Hanley. Hampson. Good tackle by David Hume. Gregory. Strong running that time by Ian Lucas. Kelvin Skerritt. Andy Gregory. Just knits the whole thing together for Wigan. Edwards. Just about the biggest hit we've seen today from Richard Ayres. Stop Edwards in his tracks. Quickly up to prevent Dermot making progress, but here's Andy Platt. Five tackles. Sean Edwards. Just drives Witness back into the corner on the sixth tackle. I think that Witness at the moment are really lacking Kurt Sorensen's drive in the middle of the ruck. The Wigan forwards are making a lot of yardage, and uh, at, just at this point in time, the Witness forwards look a little bit out of their depth. The Witness have both Emose Coloto and Kurt Sorensen there at the far end. 33 stone of forward ready to come on. And they're not there just to cut the half time oranges, I can assure you. They'll be a part and parcel of this match. Here is Joe Grimmer. Now the two substitutes. I'm not quite sure which is the back substitute and which is the forward. Hampson. Platt's very hungry for work today. Skerritt. Ian Lucas, Andy Gregory, and offload it wide, and they offloaded it straight into Carrier's hands. Wigan were penalised for crossing anyway. Tony Myler, Richard Ayres making a half break. Les Holiday. Oh, it's a tricky long ball and Dean Bell's intercepted it in front of Bodding has a chance. Tried to smuggle it back out to Bell. Ball's gone to ground. Paul Hume's in trouble with the referee. But that was witness all over, taking chances, and that time it didn't come off. Well, witness are renowned for taking chances in attack, but against a team like Wigan, we can capitalise on the slightest mistake there there was just a good example and if the last pass hadn't have gone to ground I think they would have had try number two Tony Myler on the left is the witness skipper Paul Hume's getting the talking to it was Les Holiday's pass Dean Bell gathered it but Bottica just couldn't quite smuggle it back into his hands I was talking to the uh, Wigan A-team coach Graham West prior to the game and Wigan beat witness in a reserve fixture at Central Park last night and they had an interception try to thank for that the sort of chance that witness always run we're into the second quarter Wigan lead by six points to nil rugby league live from Norton Park it's the big two head-to-head -head. Joe Lydon fighting touch Wigan with Ian Lucas and Amosi Coloto is ready to make his return Gregory again, another lovely ball to Dean Bell. Kevin Iro on the burst. Tackles were strong enough. And both witness substitutes are going to come on. Doug Lawton with just 21 minutes gone has made the decision. And Sorensen and Coloso are in. And Grimmer and Paul Hume are out for now. Every time Wigan put a set play on, with, particularly with Andy Gregory, they look like they can break witness at any time. And I think the danger signs have been there. And obviously Doug Lawton has sent these two on to try and settle the younger fellas down. Tony Myler. Here's Kurt Sorensen. 
He's actually with uh, Wigan as a teenager for a season. And here's Amosi Coloto, who is in high form at the moment. Sini Faimalo. Good witness names, those Coloto and Faimalo. Holiday. Oh, beauty. Botchagrid read it, but there was nothing he could do about it. Milo low down. Been very quiet in the first half. Dennis Betts, so I would have expected a lot more involvement from the young test second rower. Yeah, the front row have really taken on the lion's share of the work with some good support from Andy Platt. Ellery Hanley. Andy Gregory forcing Spruce to move across together John Deborah here's a Sini Faimalo again Flymo, as they call him here at Norton Park. Such a pacey forward. Holiday kicking again. Again, plying Bottega's flank. Come on, there. Stay out there. Come on, spread up, ball. Walk away. Dean Bell. He runs as straight as any prop forward. Edwards. Hanley. Well, there's Holiday not standing on ceremony. But he held Hanley down. And Witness have been penalised. And we can have another penalty. And I fancy another goal kicking opportunity for Frano Botica. It's a similar sort of opportunity to the one that he kicked earlier in the game. It wasn't the tackle that was penalised, it was the lying on there which prevented Hanley from playing the ball quickly. Very hard to see what that penalty was actually for. It was a great tackle by Holiday. He stopped Hanley dead in his tracks, picked him up and speared him into the ground. It's the sort of defence that they need to put against his Wigan pack at the moment to try and get back into this game. I think there was a little bit of hand-holding when they got on the ground just to make sure that Ellery didn't move too quickly. I think they, he was probably asking about the weather in France for next weekend's test match. So Frano Botica with a chance to stretch Wigan's lead to eight points. He's caught it so well again. And Botica's second successive penalty second successful penalty carries Wigan into an eight point lead 26 minutes gone Wigan do have an excellent record here that final furlong win last year was their fifth in seven visits and generally they've had the upper hand in recent times but uh, since Bobby Goulding's winning kick last February Witness have beaten Wigan three times in a row First time for nine years that's happened. Won both of this season's encounters. But we're going to biting back this afternoon and lead by eight points to nil. And the value for it. It's been altogether more control and discipline about the Wigan performance. They've been better organised so far, Peter, haven't they? Yes, obviously they've been able to make a lot of breaks around the ruck area. Here's another one right now. And you know who. 
missed a, <laughs> missed a score a try. Gregory kicking. Take a little bit late then by David Hume. Stuart Spruce. It's only his fifth start in the senior team, Spruce. He's growing up very quickly. John Devereaux. Witness look a very disorganised unit at the moment. They really need the man there with the ball, Kurt Sorensen, needs to get back and charge onto this ball and really make a dent in the Wigan defence. Holiday's kicking is their main ploy at the moment. He seems to have found his range all right. The Wigan defence, particularly in the forwards, is very, very strong. At the moment, there's no way through for the witness pack. And although it's very frustrating for them, they've really got to keep plugging away and, and just. At the moment, they really haven't got any answer. This holiday's kicking has been very accurate, but what in fact he's doing is just kicking possession back to Wigan. And here's Iro and Bell trying to make something of that possession. Edwards. Iro couldn't quite gather it, he knocked it forward. It's just those couple of occasions when Wigan tries something off the cuff that windows start to look dangerous. Well, I think that's where, where their game is best. Uh, obviously, if Curry had got two hands to that, it would have been six points of, uh, under the sticks. But if he had missed it and not got one finger onto it, I think Ira would have put it down at the other end. We just have good position here. David Hume. They really do need a score before half time. They've got 11 minutes to find it. Tony Myler. If you get close to him, there's always something happening on Mossi Coloto. Witness his best chance so far. Wigan penalised for offside. Ellery Hanley. Now, will Witness take the two? They've surely got to. Even though they're eight points behind, Clive, I feel that they put this over and get the goal and they just hang in there till half time obviously with their, their style of play they can score a couple of tries in, in only a few minutes and they can turn the game they've just got to weather this storm they are lacking their ace goal kicker of course Jonathan Davis through injury in his absence Les Holiday is going to take the responsibilities Andy Currier can kick goals Alan Tate can kick goals but Holiday whose kicking has been such a feature of the match so far has a real test of his nerve. He's very much a part-timer in this particular art. Oh, he's hit the upright. It might just be a good break for witness yet, this. John Devereaux. Well, they've got six more tackles there. They've got the tap penalty, which they turned down. Here's Holiday. Dangerous, but it came off. They've been penalised again. Now, will Witness go for goal again? Yes. Andy Kerry is offering his services, but Les Holiday says, I'll get it right this time. Yeah, obviously they're holding the man down and the play the ball. Witness in a great attacking position. The Wigan defenders trying to hold him down for as long as possible to enable everyone to get back into position. I think Wigan may have it in the back of their minds that giving these penalties away might not be too costly without Davis. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Holiday comes up with now. He uh, was a planned move, obviously, before he had the ball on his string, but uh, this two points is very vital. He's got it right this time. He's hauled Witness back to within six points of Wigan's 8-2 lead. They really had to come back down the field with something. And they've come back with two points. It's 
Seems to have a lot in his mind, Doug Lawton. Ready for the last eight minutes of the first half. And his team really haven't shown their potential yet. This is usually the time that someone like Martin Afire will come in and do something brilliant and uh, pluck one of those tries he's famous for. And uh, Witness really do need one at this time. Here's a Mossy Colota. I spoke to the Witness physio, Vith Gleave, last Sunday, and she said that he was two weeks away from playing again. And here he is seven days later on the field, Colota, an amazing specimen. See, women just don't understand men. All he had was a shattered knee. It was never going to keep him out, was it, Viv? Steve Hansen. Kevin Iro. Twenty-two and still growing. Dennis Betts is only twenty-one. Gregory. Edwards. And is inside of him. Wasn't altogether aware of the options then, Sean Edwards, but he's made a good break and some good ground. Dean Bell will make a little bit more and we're going to back inside the witness 25 on the fifth tackle. Gregory. Now who's going to claim that? Andy Currier. Botrick has seemed more concerned about making the tackle than trying to make the catch. Aware that even though Currier was hemmed in 10 yards from his line, if he'd missed that tackle it could have been four points for witness. Sorensen trying to lift the tempo. And he's got himself a penalty. Colin Morris absolutely adamant that the tackle player should be given the opportunity to play the ball quickly, but Kirk quite enjoys those head-to-head -head confrontations. Approaching the last five minutes of the first half. Witness in possession, trailing Wigan by eight points to two. Coloto. Richard Ayres. Holiday. Absent. Do well to readjust and take that and avoid the chase and set up a counter attack which very nearly produced dividends. It was a rather disorganised witness chase that. They left an escape route for Steve Hampson. Low down. No markers, so he's able to play the ball to himself. Gregory. Sorensen penalised. I beg your pardon, it's Andy Gregory who's penalised. It's a witness penalty. I think Andy Gregory's been sent off, Bob. The referee made a reference to uh, some sort of biting action before and just pointed to the dressing room for Andy Gregory. And that it's no sin bin. That's the end of Andy Gregory's afternoon. Quite, quite sensational. Had six years here at Witness, of course. Now, what did he do? Oh, he's got a chunk of Kurt Sorensen's hand, I fancy then. Oh, 
my word, you have to have eyes at the back of your head to referee these games. So witness a man up at six points down. Holiday. Holiday trying to tee something up for Myla. Oh, beautifully offloaded to Spruce, but what a cracking tackle. Witness sensing that they've got an opportunity to get some points on the board here, Clive, and I think they've lifted their game again. Only two minutes of the first half remaining, and they've tossed it away. Bit of confusion to see who's going to take over the positions in the back line now with their main organiser gone off the field. Edwards is into scrum half, so we've now got that direct confrontation between he and David Hume that we were discussing prior to the game. They were lining up to have a go at Hanley there. Let me tackle him. It's all very well saying that when you're one of four. It's when you're one on one against him that you're not so keen. Dennis Betts. Dean Bell. Kevin Iroh. He's awesome, isn't he? Fifth tackle. Edwards. I think Wigan will be quite happy to see away this final minute of the half and get back into the dressing room and give the backroom staff there a chance to think about the situation and reorganise and take stock. But we just have the ball with John Devereaux, Stuart Spruce, Alan Tate. Thought about on fire, thought better of it. Arrow blocking out the light. Richard Ayres. Sorensen, ripped out of his hands though by Kelvin Skerritt. It was a meeting of minds. Brute strength from Skerritt to win the ball back from Wigan. Dermot going on from acting halfback. Stoppage time at the end of the first half. 8-2 Wigan lead. Sean Edwards, Ellery Hanley in the clear again. In the points again. He just seems to be running downhill, doesn't he? When he bursts onto the ball like that, you can get a hand on him, but you cannot prevent him from doing what is in his mind. Sean Edwards doing a good Andy Gregory impersonation there, finding Ellery Hanley hitting the hole just where he's expected to be. The cover's got no chance to get a hand on him. He's over for a try. He's an amazing athlete, isn't he? He just seems to be in the right place at the right time all the time. And it's no coincidence that he scored 302 tries in his career. Just look at this. The man knows exactly where to be. Runs onto a great pass from Sean Edwards. And really, that is a crucial four-pointer with Andy Gregory being off the field. He's heading towards another milestone now because that's 194 first division tries. And that is a rugby league record. And he's just six short of a double century in Division 1 with... Bradford and now Wigan. Dougie Lawton would have been very disappointed with that little lapse in defence there, Clive. Obviously, with 12 men on the field, they must have fancied their chances coming back at Wigan in the second half, but this has made the task that much harder for them. And Frano Botica with a chance to force Wigan 12 points clear. done it and 
just what you might have expected Wigan to be happy to see out the final seconds of the first half and get to the dressing room and reassess they reassert themselves and they go in with a 14 points to two half-time lead Ellery Hanley first into the dressing rooms well second after Andy Gregory scored the two tries Gregory was the other headline maker in the first half there's never any shortage of drama when Widnes and Wigan come together. But Wigan have been strong and disciplined throughout. Widnes a little bit error prone and that half-time scoreline reflects Wigan's superiority. We'll be back. Welcome back to Rugby League Live from Norton Park where Wigan lead Witness by 14 points to two at half-time. Just to reiterate, Wigan are down to 12 men in the second half following the sending off of their scrum half there, Andy Gregory, for biting Kurt Sorensen during the first half exchanges. It's 10 months since anybody other than the Australian tourists have beaten Witness here, or even come close to it. They've been averaging 30 points a game in their championship matches here this season but they're finding we're going to rather different proposition to anything that they faced in the opening months of the season. A real test now for Witness. Forty seconds into the first half. Sean Edwards saw Richie Ayres steaming through then and just decided that he had to commit himself and hit him probably chest high and uh, Richie Ayres said a few things to him and uh, they weren't very happy men. A lot of responsibility on Edwards in this second half in the absence of Gregory. You can see them wide out. Oof. Edwards penalised. Witness penalty. Witness inside the Wigan 25. David Hume. Les Holiday. His first 10 minutes of this second period could be decisive. Tony Myler, witness have got to find another gear. Kurt Sorensen. Asini find Myler. Lost the ball. Locked it forward. Scrum down. Wigan put in. The most impressive aspect of Witness's recent form here is that they conceded just six tries in their last four home games. For all their flair and attack, well, they've conceded two to Hanley already this afternoon. Here's Joe Lydon, Dean Bell. Dennis Betts taking up Peter Tux's invitation to get more involved. Oh, that was high from Coloto. Oh. It's 12 aside. Amasi Coloto dismissed for the high tackle. And I don't think there will be too many arguments about that. There's been a real purge on the head high tackle in rugby league in the last 12 months. And that is exactly what the purge is directed at. Just just when the uh, balance of power looked like shifting to witness, then Amosi Coloto stepped back on the inside, threw his arm out and caught Skerritt under the chin. The referee had no hesitation in sending for an early shower. And I think both offences which have been penalised with dismissals are the sort of thing that rugby league players themselves would like to see clamped down on, Peter. There's no yes, place obviously. to for that. I, I feel a little bit sorry for Coloto because obviously you get a man who's good on his feet, step back inside, he threw his arm out, no, no malicious intention and just caught him high. Dennis Betts. Andy Platt. What a strong game he's having. Dermot. Edwards smothered by Faimalo Dermot working the short side and losing the ball 
covered by Stuart Spruce. Kurt Sorensen. Betts going inside, trying to rip the ball clear. Richard Ayres. And this is the area that witnesses sometimes have problems with running their way out of their own 25. They're not a bulldozing team. They've got to kick their way out. And Holiday can do that. Hapson taken on the full. No more courageous player in the game than Steve Hampson. Five minutes of the second half gone. Still witness two, Wigan 14. Dermot going on from dummy half. Is nobody in support. Dermot went the wrong way. Then the Wigan back line was set up very, very deep. Five tackles. Edwards. John Money was saying to me in the week that there's a bit more dash about Sean Edwards' play again. This was the dismissal of Coloto. Yes, it looked like Coloto had set himself for a very strong front on hit and then when Skerritt stepped to his inside, he was already halfway through the tackle and flung an arm out. It really is getting hot in the trenches. Tony Myler. I think that's just what Telvin Skerritt needed. It's, uh, he's, he's wanted to be involved in the play ever since he got that high tackle. The most impassive man in the ground, Doug Lawton, the witness coach. A look of concern on his face, though. <laughs> Kurt Sorensen. He really sets the temperature for the witness performance when he's on the field, Sorensen. Offside, there were two markers and Edwards straight in to the five metre no man's land and was penalised. A lonely dressing room for a Mossy Coloto, the second player dismissed today. It's quite enough of that. <laughs> Here's a CD5 Marlow. There's Holiday. And he was waiting for that. Andy Platt. John Money in the centre of your picture, the Wigan coach, watching from his position in the stands. Watching with some satisfaction, no doubt. We just have the ball back, though. David Hume. Kurt Sorensen. Garrett says he's mine. Lucas it was who made the tackle. Stuart Spruce in the line. David Hume. Every time witnesses look like they're about to launch a very, very good assault, it's just little mistakes creeping into their player. Drop ball, knock on and uh, it's really just destroying their build-up. Hanley now playing at standoff half. Patrick hunting. Who can catch him? 
Martin to fire his great friend made the tackle in the end. He had to. Short Edwards tapped by Ophir once more. Who says he can't defend? Hand is down injured for the moment. A little bit dazed. Dean Bell. Dermot. Edwards, that's what he does so well. Supports the brakes. And he's got a penalty. It's a give me two points for an illegal tackle on Sean Edwards. Well, obviously, this is going to make things very difficult for Witness because at the moment they're two converted tries behind Wigan. This looks like being a gift two points for Frano Bodica, and if they get 14 points clear, it's going to take Witness three scores or three, three, two converted tries and another try to get back in front. It's a very, very difficult task. As he knows only too well. So a very big kick for Frano Bodica. It's the simplest chance that he's had so far, but he's been in this game long enough to realise the significance of stretching the Wigan lead beyond the 12-point mark. This could be the match here. Clear breathing space for Wigan. Botica's third penalty of the afternoon, his fourth successful kick. Puts John Mooney's side 16 points to two in the lead. And Witness have now got to score three times. Clive, I think that the big names in the Witness team are going to have to stand up and be counted here. I think that uh, Martin Afire and Phil McKenzie particularly are going to have to pull something out of the bag very shortly. We've had 11 minutes of the second half. Deadest bets for Wigan. Skerritt stopped at his tracks by Richard Ayres. Platt again, taking on all comers. Dermot slipped out to Edwards for the tackle by Tony Myler. Hanley. Hanley claiming that it came off a witness foot. But it's a witness ball. Hanley Hanley's disappointed about that. Thought he kicked the ball onto an opponent. Thought Wigan should have had the put in. Myler to take. This hasn't quite regained his spark after that groin operation earlier in the season, Alan Tate. In fact, he's got to go to see the specialist again on Tuesday for a checkup. Myler sprucing the line. David Hume. Handley's defence, which Ma really highlighted at half time. Again, evident. Tony Myler. A bit loose. Well collected by Spruce, here's Devereaux. I don't know about having 12 players on the field, there are times when Wigan seem to have 15. Currier, now he can come up with something out of nothing. Bottica was alert to it though, and Bottica launches the counter-attack. That's what it needs from Witness though, Peter. Somebody like Curry just to try something like that. Well, something like that's going to come up for them very soon because we're going to look in a very menacing position right now and if they put another score on very shortly, I think this game's out of reach. Ian Lucas. Been so impressed by Lucas, Skerritt and Platt. They've formed a very solid platform for this Wigan performance. Enable the real flair players outside them to flourish. And here's Steve Hansen.
he can only watch and hope but he knows that his win bonus is in pretty good hands out there five tackles Edwards Hanley loitering with intent well collected by Stuart Spruce boy what a prospect he is he's in the uh, Great Britain under 21 squad which Phil Lardo will have charge of in France next weekend again Wigan's markers weren't properly aligned there they must stand directly behind each other well, the second must stand directly behind the first that's Philip Clark and a Wigan forward substitute Immediately and directly behind the two involved in the play of the ball is the letter of the law, the guidance for the marking players. And we're going to be caught out a couple of times there. David Hume, Richard Ayres. seems to be one pass at a time for witness There's nothing very planned about it they always take chances but it's got an air of desperation about it now Andy Currier five tackles and where have they got Holiday did well to get his kick away, but it's right down the throat of Steve Hansen. Fire making the tackle again. Martin Dermott's had a busy match. Remember, he played in two out of the uh, three test matches in New Zealand ahead of Lee Jackson, Martin Dermott, the Wigan hooker. And Jackson's one of the first names on Marilly's team sheet at the moment. Ian Lucas, who of course toured two. It's interesting to note, Clive, that the only two witness players at this point of the second half that really can hold their head up are probably Les Holiday, the look forward, and Stuart Spruce, the youngster at the back of the uh, back of the side. And you would you'd be expecting a lot of the bigger names to be putting a lot more input into the game. The last set of six they had off that penalty, they actually lost, actually lost 20 metres in the set of six tackles. As Stuart Spruce. A prospect product of the uh, Witness Tigers side who so much talent has come through locally for this club another of their local talents Paul Hume is preparing to come back into the match as Edwards kicks John Deborah tackling's in fierce Bruce prepared to take on the responsibility. Holiday's got it away to Sorensen. Tate's made the inside break. Sorensen regathered it. Six more. Great defence again by the Wigan Pack, Clyde. They just, every time they pick a witness man, they drive him back five metres. Carrier. Uh, was he blocked by Skerritt? Referee had a look and said no. Steve Hansen. Andy Carrier still recovering from that collision with Skerritt. Collision is what the referee felt it was. Sixteen two, the Wigan lead. Hanley finding touch again. Paul Hume ready to return, and interestingly, it's Phil McKenzie is going to be substituted. And 
he really hasn't been himself today. Paul Hugh, of course, can slot in at Hocker. Mackenzie's staying on for the scrum, which he's won. Myler, on to Tate. Might have moved that on to Courier and Devereaux. Holiday. Helping hand from Iro. Myla. Perry was just a bit too far away from him. Mackenzie. Fai Marlo. Devereaux in ball. Holiday. Into the final quarter then. Witness still trailing by 16 points to two. Paul Hume's long wait to be reintroduced into the game. It appears to be coming to an end and it's Richard Ayres now who's going to uh, come off. They've he took a knock a couple of minutes ago. Mackenzie will stay on. Richie Ayres is also in the current Great Britain squad. He's replaced by another squad member, Paul Hume. Joe Lyden. Live from Norton Park, where witnesses proud home record here, stretching back to the 11th of March last year, is under very severe threat from a highly charged Wigan performance. They lead by two tries to zero and by 16 points to two. Both of the tries scored by Ellery Hanley in the first half. Each side has had a player sent off. Andy Gregory in the first half for Wigan, Imosi Coloso in the second for Witness. Andy Platt, a man of the match contender. Five tackles. Martin Dermott. Spruce quickly forward. trying to get into the game he was held down then and he's run himself a penalty be interesting to see if Woodness can use Les Holiday down in the uh, Wigan 25 here he seems to have the potential to get the ball away but unfortunately he doesn't seem to have many options or many runners when he gets down there uh, Woodness's support play hasn't been too hot today which is strange for them David Hume, Paul Hume. Holiday check before he'd taken half a pace forward. David Hume. Great Wigan defence again. Great credit to the coaching staff this performance. A lot of talk in the town of Wigan recently about the nature of the team's performances at the moment. Some fans feel that they're too defence orientated, but you can't argue with the effect of their cover against arguably the most dangerous attack in the country and again they've made no progress at all on five tackles and Holiday has to kick it's a real bomb for Steve Hansen rock solid Dean Bell Edwards, <laughs> dummy to nobody there, there's absolutely nobody outside of him. Here's Kevin Iro. what a break. Big tackle for Stuart Spruce to make, Iroh's offloaded it. Sean Edwards, Iro again, great break. Ellery Hanley, hat-trick. Oh boy, what a try. Ellery Hanley rounded it off. 
but a great, great Wigan move. It's 10th try for Wigan against Widnes, as surely sealed the victory. His third of the afternoon makes it 20 points to two. Sean Edwards sees no one on his outside there, gives it to Kevin Iroh, and look at the pace and power of this big man. He takes off down the sideline, looks inside, who's there? Sean Edwards accepts it, the cover comes back across to get him. Back to Kevin Iroh, might have been a little bit forward, and Ellery Hanley, always there, just accepts the third try of the day. There we have Iroh, gives the ball back to Edwards. Edwards looks for support, gives it back to Iroh again, the big man pulls it in. He just gives it back to Ellery Hanley, and there he is again to torment the witness defence. Ellery Hanley's third try. <coughs> Ellery Hanley scoring a witness try, really. It, it's that, that's their trademark, isn't it? Well, really, with the, the performance today, just you take uh, Ellery Hanley's three tries, and particularly their defence. The Wigan forwards have been absolutely phenomenal today. Andy Platt, the two prop forwards, have really put in a great performance, and really. If this hasn't got the alarm bells ringing in a lot of the first division sides, particularly Hull, I'll be very surprised. Wigan have never been higher than second in the table this season. They started the day in fifth. They will move up to third if they seal this victory and everything's going for them. Botica improving, Hanley's hat-trick try. And Ellery's 14th of the season stretches the Wigan lead to 22 points to two and look where it started and look what Sean Edwards had outside of him absolutely nothing he had to go that way I remember the part that Edwards played in the link up Iro made the initial break riding the two challenges that's what Edwards does superbly support that might just have been forward but nobody would argue with the quality of the try Twenty-two points to two, Wigan lead. I think it's time now that the witness pack particularly try and put a bit of pride back into their performance and salvage something from this. Otherwise, no, I don't think Wigan are going to be too worried about playing him later on in the season. Kurt Sorensen trying to restore that pride. It's six years since Wigan reached even this stage of the season without a trophy. Witness, of course, hold the Charity Shield and the Lancashire Cup. Alan Tate. Ball went off Hanley and Spruce has got the try. He's really deserved that too, Stuart Spruce. This is a bit of a, a melee developing away from the play. Shame that all this should take the attention away from a well-earned try from a very, very good young player, Stuart Spruce. Dennis Betts is really angry. Well, obviously, Tepper's running a bit high here. The witness men wouldn't be very happy with their performance, and I think that they're getting a little bit sick and tired of seeing the red and white jumpers come through them, and they're taking this opportunity of a good try to just let the Wigan fellows know that they're still around. Well, that's the matter of the moment, in actual fact, Stuart Spruce. Here it is, comes out here, a good ball from Paul Hugh to Martin Fire. quick hands to Alan Tate, he does well, gets on the outside, he sees the cover coming across, back inside, off a Wigan hand, play on, Re good decision from the referee, and Stuart Spruce, who's had a very, very good game at fullback, scores the try. There it is again, a good ball from Hugh, and very good ball from uh, Martin Fire. everyone would have expected him to run the ball, but he gave it to Tate, came back off a Wigan player, and Spruce was right on the spot to accept the four-pointer. And that's his first ever try for Witness. The two captains have been called together. Try and restore some peace. I think Colin Morris just looking at his watch there. Maybe said to Ellery Hanley and Tony Mayer, look, we've only got 12 minutes to go. Just settle it down. I think from the restart of play, Clive, I wouldn't be surprised to see these uh, young bulls from Wigan, Skerritt and Lucas, get stuck right into this witness pack because I know that Dennis Betts was having a lot to say when he was pulled out of that little uh, little fracas with uh, one of the witness players, and I'm sure the witness players uh, feel likewise.
Let's Holiday will try to improve Spruce's try. And witness really are missing Jonathan Davis's expertise in that department at the moment. Now let's see what all the nonsense was about. Witness moving the ball wide. Here's Dennis Betts making the tackle. Now let's see what happens after that. Well, there's a little bit of a confrontation afterwards. But this is more interesting to me. Betts went through with his tackle, Clive. He was uh, a little bit high on Paul Hume, and obviously the witness fellas did not appreciate it, and one of the uh, witness forwards came Oh, I tell aid. you what, did Stuart Spruce get that down? Yes, he did. I thought for a moment that was the dead ball line, it was the try line. 22 points to six is the Wigan lead. We have ten minutes to go. It seems unthinkable that Witness could pull this game around. If anybody can, they can. But Wigan are just not in the mood to let them. There's a lot happening just around the fringes of the rucks at the moment. Holiday. Booming one almost directly between Bottica and Hampson. Bottica has 10 metres of grace when he collects the ball. It's amazing to think that we're going to have been beaten eight times already this season, four of those in the championship. Nobody in the last ten years has won the title with any more than 60 feet, so they are walking a little close to the edge at the moment. But all the signs are that they're getting their best players back and getting their best form back. Iro. Lucas stopped. Andy Platt. Five tackles. Lighters kick. Spruce taking it well again. John Devereaux. Tony Myler. Oh, fire. Away from Light. And he's across. The fire kicks. Edwards gathers. I think Martin of Fire might just have been aware of Ellery Hanley then. I think he saw the, uh, the shadow of Ellery coming across and heard the footsteps, and uh, I think he thought discretion was the better part of Valor on that instance. Yes, he took the ring road after he kicked. He didn't go right through the middle of town, that's for sure. What a great effort of Ellery Hanley, the, the triple try scorer, to get a crossing cover on a man of his pace. That's Dennis Betts, who was the central figure in the shenanigans that followed the Spruce try. Calvin Skerritt. Sean Edwards. Dean Bell. Edwards will kick on the fifth tackle. The first hint of a mistake by Stuart Spruce, but he's had an impeccable match. John Devereaux. This fixture was quite literally the title decided two seasons ago. Wigan had to win here to deny witness but failed. They returned with a four-point championship lead last February and pickpocketed a dramatic late victory, which probably more than any other helped them regain the crowd. I wonder if victory today will prove to be as important to them. It seems inevitable now. But here's Kurt Sorensen trying to do something about it. John Devereaux. 
Six minutes remaining. 16 points the gap. Witness on fifth tackle. Paul Hume. Asini Faimalo. They've got to keep it alive. Hume again. Looking for Spruce inside him and finding only Sean Edwards. He must know the game's up. But not the whole championship race. Witness will still have a big, big say in that. They will still have a lead in that particular contest over Wigan, whatever the result tonight. Three points between them at start of play. Kevin Arrow forced him to touch. Not a great deal of love lost between these two teams, particularly at this stage of the season, Clive. I'm sure they know they're going to meet each other again along the season, particularly in a big cup game or maybe that vital end of season clash. Andy Carrier. Tony Myler. Martin O'Fire. This is witness. David Hume. Again, the cover though is just brilliant. Steve Hansen that time. Offside Wigan. Two points are no good to witness. Not sure they can kick them even. Myler. Oh, fire's got a chance. It's all happening a little bit late, but witness are back in business. They're back to within two scores. Martin O'Fire, number 26 of the season for him. Brings witness back to within 12 points. Four minutes to go. Well, there it is. Les Holiday takes a quick tap. A great pass. Myler holds it up, holds it up, and then he sees the wingers come up too soon. Passes out to a fire who goes in for the easiest of tries. Haven't seen much of a fire this afternoon. There it is again. He taps it, gets it out to Myler. Myler does terrific. He dummies to Sorensen. The winger comes in, does in two no man's land, Joe Lydon, and a fire has just a clear run to the line. I think Myler must be just about the best picker of a pass in the game. Well, the way he just did that then, he just had it on a string, and Joe Lydon, he thought he was going to release it to one of his runners. He came flying in off the wing, left Martin a fire unmarked, and uh, it's probably the first thing Martin's really had to do all afternoon. Andy Carrier has taken over the goal-kicking responsibilities from Les Holiday. No more successful from a very difficult chance. Well, they've got to score two converted tries in three minutes. But Martin O'Fire's try, which is his 11th in his brief career in the game against Wigan. That's a measure of the man when he scores at the very highest level. Just shows you the, the class and skill of uh, Tony Myler here. Les Holiday taking the quick tap, getting the ball out to him. He just holds up the pass beautifully. Look at that. Three times he held it back, finally gave it to a fire. No wonder he scored so many tries in first division. Twenty-two ten. There's another twenty minutes to go. It might be interesting. Whether or not there are two and a half. Kurt Sorensen. Devereaux. You're never quite sure when you're playing against Witness, though, are you, Peter? Well, if there was one team you said had to score two converted tries in three minutes, I know who most people would pick. They wear black and white, and it's not Hull. But inevitably, they're going to have to take that kind of risk. Scrum down the verdict. Stuart Spruce. Held on by Myler. Les Holiday. Pet Sorensen. David Hume.
Tony Myler. Still probing, still hoping. Phil McKenzie. There's Holiday. A senior by Marlow. He's been a little bit muted by his own high standard today, Faimalo. We're going to have won the contest up front. Holiday kicking again on fifth tackle. Finding touch and forcing Wigan back. We're deep inside the final minute. John Boney, the Wigan coach, leaving his place in the stands to descend towards the dressing room and join in the celebrations which will commence quite shortly. This has been an awesome performance, Clive, when you consider that they lost their on-field general in the first half and one would have expected them to wilt a little bit, but instead they got stronger. John Money pointed up the importance of a Wigan victory today to keep their championship challenge bubbling along. They really couldn't afford to have slipped five points behind witness in the race instead they're going to close the gap to just one they're going to leapfrog over Hull Kingston Rovers and Leeds into third place behind witness and Hull and I think the three main contenders are now lined up for the championship run in I think they're going to sort it out between them Prano Botica His kicking's been a factor today, Botica, you know, Wigan are only three tries to two ahead, and yet they have a 12-point lead. Which begs the question what impact Jonathan Davis might have made on the match. But Wigan have been so superior in so many facets. Martin O'Fire. Alan Tate. Bruce. He's been witnesses man of the match, as nominated by the local sponsors, but I don't think there's been much danger as to who the overall award would go. The man who scored the three tries. Alan Tate. Clever kick. Martin of Fires looking for his second. Martin of Fires got his second. Two minutes of stoppage time. The Martin of Fire fan club meets in the corner to celebrate yet another try. Certainly will forge him ahead of Greg Austin in the race to become the game's leading scorer for the fourth successive season. But I don't think it's going to change the match too much. There we had a great break by Alan Tate, took a reverse pass. He saw that the Wigan cover defence was converging, so he just put a nice little cross kick in. Here we go again, the ball's flung out thrown anyway there. McKenzie does well here, turns Tate back on the inside. Tate, who's been fairly quiet all afternoon, sees he can't get a good pass away, so puts a cross kick in. And there is uh, Martin Fire, probably the best vulture in the game, coming along, just uh, easy pickings for him. Good to see Alan Tate's involvement in two of those three witness tries. He's such a good player, and his fitness has been such a hindrance to him this season. Holiday having another go. But Wigan have managed, a witness have managed just one successful kick this afternoon. They now actually match Wigan three tries apiece. But Wigan still had that 22-14 lead. And that's the lead that they will take back to Central Park with them tonight. Thanks to Ellery Hanley, a majestic hat-trick from the master of the Rugby League universe. An eventful and compelling match. Wigan always held the upper hand. Their forwards laid a marvellous platform for Hanley and company. And despite Witness coming back with a try from Spruce and two from Afar in the closing stages, there was never much doubt where the points were heading. Wigan become the first side to win here, other than Australia, for 11 months and move up to third place in the table. We'll be back with a verdict in a moment. <laughs>